What made you go into it? My, the main reason for me working out was because, like, every time I look in the mirror, I'm like, gosh, I have a flat chest. I stepped into the gym for aesthetics reasons. I wanted to look good. I'm skinny, I want to look good. We want to look good, we want to do that. But there's also an, that aspect of the mental state we don't really see. One thing I feel like people who work out, gym rats, what we do is sometimes we find it difficult to translate what we learn, what, what we what we learned from the gym into our personal life. Hello everyone, it's me KP and today I have a wonderful friend of mine. His name is Solomon and we're going to have a little bit discussion today about fitness. So yo boy, so how have you been though? I've been wonderfully good, thank you for asking. Yeah. Okay, okay. Why are you being all nice and stuff? You don't talk to me like that, hey? <laughs> Master, we're not going to talk like that. So you have to get relaxed. So how are you doing, Charlie? Oh, I'm good. I'm just coming from the gym. I'm tired, to be honest. I'm like, I'm sore. My whole body is sore. But I'm like, ah, let me just show up and do it. Because we scheduled. Yes. We scheduled. Okay, yeah. perfect. Well, I just want to say thank how you very you, much. Though? How about you? How about me? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm tired. Yeah. Though I'm very tired right now. I went to work tonight last night mm -hmm. and then i came home and then i was supposed to sleep but i didn't get a chance to sleep so now i have to get this podcast going so hopefully maybe once we are done i can be able to get um some sleep that's good so um you, you said you came from the gym though yeah, yeah, so how have your journey been since you started going to the gym what made you go into the gym oh uh, i started working out in may May. like may 2022 that's when i started working out but my the main reason for me working out was because like every time i look in the mirror i'm like hush i have a flat chest <laughs> okay that's <laughs> <laughs> like how was that i think i was like 27 and i'm like every time i ask somebody to guess my age they give me oh 22 23 i'm like it's a cool compliment but i just want to grow into my frame mm -hmm. so then i told you that hey i want to start working out you're like okay let's go so I feel like you're like you were really inspirational and motivational to me because I remember the way times I text you at five a.m. Yo, we gotta go to the gym, and then you'll be sleeping, you know. Like and they're sitting this way, you text me. I'm also like, yeah, I can't go today. We ditch, but my journey has been amazing thanks to you because you walked me through majority of the things oh. I do in the gym now. Like I think everything. I didn't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm not gonna lie. Like there were most times that I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what I was. I, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I think I have my friend Hakim, who most times, like, if I there is something that I need uh, to understand about fitness, I still do even till this day. Where I'll message Hakim and be like, "Hey, man, I need some oh. advice on how to do that." So although I was trying to teach you what to do at the gym, <laughs> what to do. <laughs> so you're basically teaching me wrong. Shit. I was literally copying mm -hmm. messages from someone and then giving you that information so i was pretty much just a medium i would oh. just say how that's how i put out I, I was pretty much just a medium where maybe sometimes you ask me a question i'll just go and message hakim and be like hey how do you do this and i'll and then i'll come and ask like i knew what i was doing most wow. times i didn't even know what i was doing i didn't even know <laughs> hey. left right so even till today i don't even know when it comes to like the whole trying to do the calorie stuff and i'm still not getting oh, it. oh yeah i'm still not getting it and it's just one of those things. so you were saying stuff about um flat chest and that made you go into yeah. fitness so would you say um if someone have a problem with their body right is that a good motivation can you say it can be a good motivation oh, to yeah. go to the gym as a human being you got to work with what you have mm -hmm. and then like at that point in my life i'm like that's that's what pushed me to go to the gym okay so it basically was a, for a superficial reason, okay. basically aesthetics. That's mm -hmm. why I stepped into the gym. And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't, I don't I mean, care. If people <laughs> think there's something. I don't care. That's, that's me. It's my life. I want to be happy. Oh, okay. So then I jumped into it. It's like the first day in the gym. I go and I'm like, huh, there's a lot of, you know, there's, there's a lot of attractive people there too. Mm -hmm. So that's, you got to use whatever you have to keep going. You're like, oh, there's good people, good looking people in here. There's nice people there. People will cheer you on and stuff. So I'm like, why not keep, why not keep coming? And also, I had you. So I feel like it made it easy for me to just, you know, transition into it. Because I wouldn't go in there by myself. There are times I would go in there by myself. And I would just, I only stuck to squatting and doing bicep curls. Because I didn't know how to bench press yet by myself. So I never did chest day by myself. I will see people bench. I'm like, oh, that'd be cool. But I never did it by myself. I didn't even tell you this. I was waited. Oh, let's go to the gym together. Let's train chest together. So if it wasn't, so the first couple of months, 
if it wasn't just if it wasn't just if it wasn't us together mm -hmm. i'm not training chest i'm training my back my legs and my shoulders <laughs> i'm not getting another bench i was terrified of it i never told you this i was terrified of it but then eventually i worked my i started working out with you and then mm -hmm. yeah i, I got the hang of it i think sometimes when you have someone to go to the gym with i think it's it's a very good motivator i'm not gonna like because there are instances where when i go to the gym alone and i'm working out is very different from when i go to the gym with you and then yeah. i'm working with you because when i'm go when i'm working alone i can go to the gym take about three minutes breaks between each set but when i'm working with you like it's like okay i know he gotta go next and then when he's and i gotta go so being able to work out with someone i think is one of those things that personally i see it as a very good thing but it's also not everybody especially now that we are all growing up where most people also oh, don't have Bro, I don't know. <laughs> Look at this. It's still the same, bro. Hi. Okay. Yeah. All right. Forever young. Now that we are 18 years. <laughs> now that we are 18 years and then we are turning into, uh, we are getting close to being 20 years. Yeah. Um, with schedules and every start, uh, with start, it makes it hard, especially to be able to find a partner to go with. So if let's say there's someone mm -hmm. that, let's go back so if there's someone that is let's say afraid to go to the gym with your experience how you able to go to the gym what would you tell that person going to the gym for the first time i'll tell you just grab your shit and go that's it like because if you keep sitting there thinking about it you're mm -hmm. not gonna go like i've been working out for two years and at the same time i sit there and i look at my bag like, oh, do i want to go mm -hmm. oh, i don't want to go do i want to go but then if i go i end up feeling good later but if i skip and i don't go like my rest of the day is just like the whole time I'm down. Mm -hmm. So if you want to just if you want to go, I understand. If you have a partner, it's going to be easy for you. But if you have no one, just go. I guarantee you, you're gonna you're gonna love it. Mm -hmm. You're gonna love it. Just keep going. Just keep you you're gonna love it. Yeah, I think sometimes I feel like there some people um, have this perception that it's a certain group of people that goes to the gym. Yeah, that's but they don't know that the gym is like a place for everyone. Like the guy that you think that is probably, that probably have worked out for eight years, that guy is still battling his own demons. Yeah. He still looks in the mirror certain times and feel like, damn, I still have to go yeah. certain ways. Yeah. So although you may feel like maybe... Um, it's a certain type of people. Once you go in there, for me, in my, in my experience, I realize that everyone is welcome over there. Everyone, everyone like, e it's always going, like, everyone is working towards something. That's and that's one thing that makes me really love the gym. It's like, it's a place for growth. Yeah. It's a place for growth where you can do different things. You are always seeing someone to be able to learn from, to be able to do certain things and then to be able to grow. And then the mental aspect of it, though, how has it been for you? <laughs> it's, it's been, it's like, it's been amazing because, so I started working out, mm -hmm. right? And then I started listening to, I think I used to listen to David Goggins. I'd watch LeBron, I'd watch Tiger Woods, all mm -hmm. the greats. So then I listened to David Goggins one time and he said, um, when it comes to pull up, he's a beast. When it comes to push ups, he's good. But then as soon as he encounters an obstacle, he quits. So he needed to train his mind. Mm -hmm. He needed to train his mind, right? And I'm like, huh, that's a really good point. So how do I train my mind? So I started, I started watching um, MMA. I, I also wanted to get into sidebar. I wanted mm -hmm. to get into MMA for, just to learn a skill. So I'd watch videos of fighters training and I'll see them get on the assault bike for like, they burn 10 calories. As soon as they get off the assault bike, they hop onto the pads and they start hitting it. I'm like, oh, that's good stuff. So I realized that every time I jump, I like I come across an obstacle, mm -hmm. what happens is your heart rate, your heart rate is going to spike mm -hmm. and then you're going to lose your shit and you cannot make a smart decision. So what I started doing is I incorporated certain workouts. So after working out, I'll just hop on the assault bike. After my traditional workout, bench press deadlift whatever after that after my actual workout i spend like 20 or 30 minutes i hop on the assault bike for burn burn 10 calories and then push and pull the sled within a space of two minutes mm -hmm. so why the reason why i did that is because i realized that once i do that my heart rate goes up and then i'm like the whole time i'm like okay your heart rate is up you've been here before calm yourself down and keep going back and forth because so check this out let's listen to this analogy 
So let's say you're driving from Toronto to Montreal. It's what, mm-hmm. a four hour, four hour trip? Yeah, four yeah. hours. You leave the house around 12, no, 11, 45 p.m., right? And then you're driving. You're having fun. In the middle of nowhere, one and a half hours into the journey, a notification pops up on your dash. Hey, um, ma- drive, drive train malfunction. Maximum output not available. Drive carefully. This is the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. What is going to happen to you mentally? You might oh, break fucked. down. You might break down. Exactly. So, like, for moments like that, if I and it did happen to me, I was mm-hmm. going to work well, but because I had an experience, I was able to calm myself down. Talk, hey, we've been here before. Mm-hmm. Calm down. I was able to calm myself down and then make logical decisions. Because trust me, if you're if you don't have a strong mind. And you're in the middle of nowhere, like 12, 12 a.m., 1 a.m., you're fucked. How are you going to like, how are you going to keep your shit together? And mm-hmm. then you're going to freak out yeah. the whole time. But then if you've trained your mind, you're going to be able to calm yourself down and then make decisions. Oh, okay, let me pull over. Can I call CAA? I might, what's the closest hotel? There's that. To make logical decisions. So for me, the mental part has been beautiful. I stepped into the gym for aesthetics reason. Mm-hmm. As to, I, wanted to, I wanted to look good. I'm skinny. I want to look good. But I stayed in there for a year, two years into it. And then I realized, oh, you got to train the mind. Mm-hmm. So it's mentally, it's been beneficial to me. I'm not going to lie. But yeah, it's been beneficial. And another thing is, sometimes you could be, like, you could be down. Feel True. a setting way. I'm like, ah. But as soon as you go to the gym, sometimes when I'm leaving the gym, I'm like, Am I, am I high? That, that is something that I personally also deal with. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. It's really something yeah. I personally do because sometimes there are moments where I'm really not feeling it. Or maybe I might be going through some stuff that like, like, you know, we are adults. Sometimes you're going through some stuff. Yeah. And then the moment I go to the gym, the moment I lift weights, the moment that I get it going, it gives some, like, literally by the time you get out of the gym, it's like, this cloud has been lifted off you. Yeah. This cloud has been lifted away. You just feel free. And it's really good because something like you said, you went in for the aesthetics, but especially the mental part, we don't talk about it mm-hmm. a lot because a lot of people think, oh, we, we go to the gym because, okay, we want to look good or we want to... We do want to look good. Okay. I mean, yep. I, I love that. Trust me. I love attention. I really love attention. Love attention. Yes. Um, we want to look good. We want to do that. But there's also an, that aspect of the mental aspect where we don't really see it. We don't see it a lot where we don't, because most people think, most people even think a lot of people that go to the gym, like mentally, maybe because we are just showing up, that's the mental capacity. But when you find yourself there, you begin to realize that it's, it's more than that. Yeah, it is more than that. It's more than that because being able to constantly lift weight push yourself yeah that part today you lift the weights to uh you try it it's not working you go back home you come back tomorrow that feeling although maybe you may have added just two pounds yeah, that's, that's <laughs> heavy the 2.5 plate just maybe you just you just added that 2.5 yeah. to it that you may feel like oh it may not be enough but the moment you lift it this joy this sense of accomplishment it, yeah. it just kind of like gives that mental energy mental toughness yeah to be able to like you know okay once i get out there i've been in this situation before and then like you said you find yourself in a place where you can't really if you've not trained your mind constantly you are always going to have that problem where you're always going to break down yeah you're always going to break down every small thing you might give up and and then even with giving up that is something that i've also really learned from the gym with the ability to push the ability to know, okay, if I didn't make it today, but by tomorrow or by next week, I'll have the strength to be able to do that. That's good. That's true. It's really something that I enjoy about it. I know that okay, I'm always going to constantly being able to push myself. So with pushing yourself, though, on days that maybe you try to lift a weight and it doesn't work out, maybe you are trying to go for a PR or something, how do you deal with those days in the words of david <laughs> fuck people okay. you go again okay we keep going until okay. we get a gun okay <laughs> <laughs> that's all i have to say it's like i listen to him a lot so it's, okay he's one of my favorite people mm-hmm. on earth so i so it's like he i remember i was listening to when he said um i'm going to be quoting a, a lot of david goggins so mm-hmm. 
He said, don't see it as failure. See it as your first, second, third attempt. Mm -hmm. So if I, I remember I tried sometime last day, I tried deadlifting. What? Four, you know, is it four or five? I was struggling. A couple of weeks, a couple of months later, I went there, four or five, light work. Boom. I did it. So you just got to keep at it. It's not, oh, I tried it first. I tried it, but I couldn't do it. Okay. It's okay. You couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Go back and keep doing it. But one thing, one thing I feel like people who work out, gym rats, what we do is sometimes we find it difficult to translate what we learn, what, what we what we learn from the gym into mm -hmm. our personal lives. Because majority of the time you're like, oh, I'm going to go push um, 225 pounds, two plates, bench. Okay. There was a struggle there. You mm -hmm. struggled to accomplish that task. But how does it translate into your life? Okay. You see what I'm saying? So it's you just, you have to like make a conscious decision to just always reflect in your mind like, oh, I did that. I could do this. Mm -hmm. It's like, cause sometimes we encounter these challenges and we're like, we forget how good or how badass we are. That's true. Like you forget, like, oh, you for something bad, something happens to you and then you forget that. Oh, you're a bad motherfucker. <laughs> you done lived at 405, mm -hmm. 425. This is nothing to you. Mm -hmm. So it all comes back to your heart rate again. Your heart rate is going to spike. <gasps> oh my God. You start losing your mind. But then if you've been in that condition over time, you just got to tell yourself, oh, we've been here before. It's okay. Don't lose your shit. Keep mm -hmm. it together, bitch. Keep it together. <laughs> You're able to like to calm yourself down mm -hmm. and then make a smart decision. That's it. Yeah, I think sometimes when you are constantly putting yourself in positions that challenges you, yeah. it's always... Like when, even though it may not be at a gym or outside the gym, because you are constantly putting yourself in situations that are, that provides growth, that challenges you, it helps create that mental toughness. It, with time, it becomes like a second nature yeah. to you. Yeah. It becomes a second nature where it's like, okay, I've, it may not be me trying uh, trying to lift four or five deadlifts, but it may be maybe today I'm broke. But I know that okay, I've been in a situation where I didn't know what to do. I couldn't lift the weight. I didn't know where the money was going to come from. But I also know that with perseverance and high, um, hard work, I can be able to get outside whatever that I'm feeling or whatever that I'm going through right now. And uh, and the gym, like we, we, we always revert back to the gym where it's like, it's always because you're showing up every day. Yeah. Shit is hard. To every know. day. Sometimes you don't want to go there. It's, Which is, it's, it's, hard. Not like, it's very hard. It's yeah. a really hard thing for, because sometimes you know you have to go. Yeah. Sometimes, because sometimes I can talk to someone and they're like, you and YB, I don't know how you guys just go every day. And, I, and, and in, at the back of my mind, I'm always like, sometimes I don't want to go. Sometimes you don't want to go, but you go. I don't want to go. But sometimes you also want to go. <laughs> That's also there. Yeah. It's like, I can't wait to get there. Ah, I can't wait. Ah, so it's like there's just addiction. Like mm -hmm. even we started training for the high rocks and mm -hmm. now but we hate it running. <laughs> but like I love running now. Yo. We got running shoes and stuff. So it's like you just gotta you just gotta go. Just show up. And you would find out certain parts of you that were hidden that I didn't even know I could run 6K. I had no idea. <laughs> I didn't know I had it in me. That's the thing. Uh, hey. That's it. We are here. It, it's so funny though, especially with the running. I think when did we start? Was it a month ago? Yeah, a month ago. And I remember the first workout. The first. <laughs> There's video evidence of people. <laughs> the first workout when we were doing the high rush training. Yeah. The first workout where I was puking yeah, all puking. over the gym and then everything. And then now when I look back, when I look at myself now, where I can run on stop for five k, I'm like, how? Yeah, yeah. I have and no that motivation is it's a really good thing because like if I was not finding myself in the gym, I think it would have been a very hard. Oh, yeah, thing. for sure. But at the same time, too, when you also see those improvements, sometimes maybe I can be there. I don't know if you feel the same. Whereas like I can be there, maybe I don't see certain things going the way that I like, and then I'll just think about it. And, yeah, now I can run five k. Yeah, <laughs> at least I have something going. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> it's okay. Just to make yourself feel good because you did that. See? 
Right, and so you just look at it and say, okay, that that is very good. That is very good. So we were talking about high rocks, mm-hmm. right? And then you've also been mentioning um, deadlift, squats, mm-hmm. and stuff. So what kind of training do you do though for high rocks? For general, general, going general, to the gym, going to the general. general. It's usually like I just mix it up. So there are times I train back and biceps, mm-hmm. chest and triceps, shoulders. I have a shoulder, just shoulders, mm-hmm. legs. So that's Quads, hamstrings, calves. Uh, what else? What else do I train? I train. Yeah, bicep curls. Did I, did I say bicep curls yet? Yeah, I said back and biceps. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And um, there's running, there's high rocks training. And, and I if I sign up at this MMA academy. So I train cardio. But it's like cardio for fighting is different. Like the way they train it is different. Wait, wait, wait. So you do strength training. Mm-hmm. Right now, to, you're doing high rocks training. Yeah. And then you first MMA. sign up for MMA. Yeah. Like, just learn the technique, you know. <laughs> I'm not, like, if you try to fight me, I'm running away. Like, I don't want to fight. I just want to learn the skill. But if my back is against the wall, you know, when, you're, when a cat has mm-hmm. his back against the wall, he's dangerous. If any, <laughs> every animal has a back against the wall, it's like, they're dangerous. So it's, I'm just learning it to learn it, the skill. Okay. That's, I'm, but it's a skill that, you know, when push comes to shove and you have to use it, mm-hmm. you wish you had it. So, like, do you see yourself maybe being a professional MMA fighter? No. No. I see myself protecting myself. Okay. If need be. <laughs> and my family. And my loved okay. ones. You know? All right. So, you, you just want to be kick able someone to protect into yourself. Yeah. Okay. So, like, why high rocks? What made you start adding high rocks to your training? And maybe some people may not know what high rocks training. Maybe high you can rocks. give us like a brief oh, okay. description of high rocks. So high rocks is a, like, it's it's an event. It's sort of like strong man. So it's, there's also like a version of CrossFit in there. So high rocks is it's an event where you run eight kilometers, mm-hmm. right? With, and there's eight different stations. So let's say the first, you, you run a kilometer and then you come back and you do some ski egg. For, what? I, don't, I, don't, I don't really remember. How long? I think the meters, I don't know, 50, 100 meters, ski egg or 200. And then you, after doing that, you run another kilometer. Mm -hmm. You come back, you come back to the second station where you probably do, you probably roll. There is like a designated time for you or designated, you know, distance for you to roll. After rolling, you go back another kilometer. You come back, fam is scary. Go another kilometer, come back, lunges, go. So it's just, it's a whole bunch, but it's fun. Like you test your endurance and your mm-hmm. strength. That's one reason why I signed up for it. But it's like even training for it, it's been beautiful. Like you learn to push yourself and some you sweat. And it's like, so I'm, once I'm done working now, I take off my shirt and I'm like, wow, I'm wringing out my soul. Mm-hmm. Like God says, <laughs> you know, I'm wringing the ring that bitch out. Yeah. So it's fun. Wow. Well, yeah. So like if you're doing the high rocks and then you're also doing strength training, mm-hmm. then how many days a week I, do you work out? But see, the thing is, the thing is, there's also, there's, there's active recovery days. So it's not like I'm resting, mm-hmm. but on my rest days, it's an easy run. You know, I would just go to the gym, hop on a treadmill, run, easy run, zone two running, you know, for like 30 minutes. And after running, I'll just do some tricep ex- extensions. Wait, so you don't get fatigued or something? Cause like, especially for me now. Like I try to do maybe depending of my depending on my work schedule. Yeah. Sometimes maybe I can do two days continuous and I will intentionally take the third day off. Yeah. Or I can do three days continuous yeah. and then I'll take the fourth day off. I try to by force take a day off yeah. to be able to recover. I don't yeah. know how you do that where you just go and go and go and go and go. Do you think you're addicted to the gym at this point? No, I think it's <laughs> I think it's Gogson's voice in my head. <laughs> Wake up, bitch. So it's like I something that I try to take it. I try to take some time off, mm-hmm. but taking a day off doesn't. It's just like just chilling on the couch doing nothing. No, no, I'm still going to move. And it's bro. It's also Goggins, man. I can't stop. He's in my head, and it's good. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes my wife would look at me like, "This guy is insane." Like I remember one time <laughs> I was sleeping, and I'm like, "Did you say something?" He's like, "No." I'm like man, I just heard "Wake up, bitch." <laughs> and, She's like, yeah, it's your subconscious. And it's probably because you listen to Goggins all the time. I'm like, yeah. I remember even when we had our daughter. Mm-hmm. In the, <laughs> I think an hour after giving birth. So I set up a camera to record my wife's reaction. She's like, it's day one, motherfuckers. It's day one. 
<laughs> so right now, the whole household is just Gorgon's household. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. Gorgon's household. So it's like, when my wife was pregnant, I'd put on David Gorgon's, Joe Rogan, and mm-hmm. Do- then Joey Diaz. So it's like, she'd be kicking in my wife's belly. So like, I still play David Gorgon's. I don't, he swears, he curses a lot, but hey, it's the world we live in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, but it's been, it's been fun. Like, let me go back to the point. Me taking a day off. Mm-hmm. It's like, I know I'm supposed to do it. I don't take a day off just to take a day off. I do something active, like go for a walk. I don't just take a day off to like, ah, feel in a couch. Mm-hmm. No, I, I can't. I can't. Wow. I, I, I just can't. Wow. Because if I try that, I'm going to be moody the whole day. Just do nothing active. No, I can't. I, I legit can't do it. Wow. Yeah. It won't, wow. it won't work. It, it will never work. And it's also like, I listen to David Goggins a lot. Oh, I'm quoting this guy. I love this guy. So um, when you listen to David Goggins, he has an alter ego called Goggins. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've listened to it. He has a book out. It's called um, Never Finished. There was an instance where he was running and then he went to this um, party and then he went in there and then, like he wanted to quit. But then he went in there as David Goggins. But he came out as Goggins. That's his alter ego came out. Mm-hmm. And then he run nonstop. So it's like every time I, sometimes we'll be training on the treadmill and I'll be running. I just go like this, put my hands there, like roll a gun, put it in there. And I hit my tie. In my head, I just hit a turbo button. Like I've heard players talk about LeBron James. I'm like, mm-hmm. in hard times, it's like he almost has a button where he hits. And it's like, it's a different person. Mm-hmm. I apply the same thing to my life. I also read, I didn't read this book. I heard somebody talk about a book called Antifragile by a guy called Nassim Taleb. So what Antifragile basically means is like, the, long, the longer you are going through something, the stronger you're getting. Yeah. So in my head. So it's like you are building the muscle. Exactly. For it. Exactly. So it's like, as I'm running, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, 6K into it. I'm like, oh, I've been on this shit 6K. I mean, my strength is like, but I try to tell myself that. So I'd be running. I'm like, oh. I'm getting tired, but as soon as I start telling myself, yeah, the longer I stay on this, the stronger and the better I get. Oh boy, we gotta keep it. So it keeps me going. So it's like, whatever fuel, whatever you have, it doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't have to make sense to anyone. Yeah. It only has to make sense to you. Like what I'm saying is it probably doesn't make sense to a lot of people, but it makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. I'll be, I'll be on there running. Just pushing yourself. Just pushing myself. And I just like, I'm getting tired. And I remember. I remember David Goggins was running and his fiance asked him a question about what he thought, what, um, how people's opinion affects him. And Goggins was like, ha ha, I love this motherfucking question. Fuck people. Exactly that. I'd be running and I'll be yelling. <laughs> Fuck people in my head. Yo, I people, love this motherfucking. People are going to assume you're a crazy person in the gym. Good for them. <laughs> but that's what keeps me going. Okay. Like it's weird, but it's like, hey. That's what keeps mm-hmm. me going. So it's like, I'm just taking mental snapshots of, I just try to work with whatever I have. There's mm-hmm. even a photo of LeBron that I see. He's wearing a t-shirt that says, J- just not anybody. But it, it, not just anybody. So it's like, oh, he's superhuman. Oh, guess what? I'm superhuman too. I can keep going. Mm-hmm. So it's just those, those nuggets. As soon as I'm getting tired, I tap into those things. And I'm going, you can't stop me. All right. Motivation. Um, oh, motivation is also crap. Motiva- so. Motivation is a very good factor because sometimes factor. when it is on the times where you need it, sometimes it can get you there. But I think especially of of late, and especially even we humans, one of the things that we lack mostly is discipline. But even we will get to the discipline aspect where, where when we were talking about gardens and everything I, I, there have been days there have been instances where i can be on the treadmill and let's say we are like i want to go for 5k and i'm currently at 4.1 mm-hmm. and i want to stop yeah i really want to stop but then you go into this like an alter ego alter different person you're like sorry <laughs> You just want to keep going. <laughs> yeah. And it's also the camaraderie. It's like, I'm going and I see you going. I'm going to keep Yo, going. Yo, like, yeah. there are instances where I'm like, and then for me, sometimes you, what I do is I have this perception or where I put something where it's like, I'm like, if you don't get this thing that you're going to feel on this, this is like, I bring it. <laughs> and sometimes it can be to the extreme where I don't want to say it on camera. Where it's like, sometimes I can be like, dude, Let's say, for, let me use something very medial, like maybe if you don't finish this 5K, 
when you cook today, the food will gonna fall down. <laughs> Hey, where from what you have, man? Whatever keeps you going, <laughs> right? No so judgment. Just I bring you like I think like a positive reinforcement, something like that. Where I'm like, okay, if you're not able because something you want to stop, yeah, you really want to stop, stop yeah. going. But then I'm like, let me bring in something, something that I really want very much that I know that okay, I don't want to jinx myself, I don't want to kiss myself. <laughs> Yeah, that's the mind. <laughs> so I need to get it done. Yeah. Because if I don't get it done, I'm expecting this to happen to me. And I don't want that to happen to me. So I would definitely I feel you. do that and then keep it going. And then on the topic of um discipline, mm-hmm. right? How do you view discipline and how do you keep the discipline going? Because sometimes the motivation can come. You can watch God games. You can watch some motivational video. And then the, it's like, it's, it's adrenaline. You just come yeah. and then you want to go. Yeah. But then on the days where the motivation is not working, it's the discipline that works. Yeah. How do you keep it going? You just go. It's like, it's that simple. Go. Because like, there are certain times where I pack my bag. What? See, you could also just trick yourself into going. So one thing I do is I leave my gym bag in my car. It's in my trunk. It's in my, it's in my trunk. I have my shoes, my socks, mm-hmm. sweatbands, everything in my car. But one thing I do is I lay out my clothes, my gym clothes. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you got to look fresh. True. You got to look fresh. So I make sure my gym clothes, like I lay them out in the morning, like the night before. Oh, wow. So I could just be sitting there and I'm just be looking at it. Pick up my phone, do, 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 scroll, put it away, go to the living room, turn on YouTube, watch it. The whole time I don't have to go to the gym. So it's like I keep walking, I come back and I see it. I see it, I'm like, oh boy. I, I just gotta go. Because I know if I don't go, I'm fucked. If, if, I, if I don't go, the rest of my day is just gonna be like, just, you know, just gonna take a, no, a nose dive. My mood is just gonna go down like mm-hmm. this. But I, once I go, I gather momentum and go. Sometimes I'm like, it could be 4 p.m. I've been procrastinating. I I, told, I'm, I tell myself I'm going to go to the gym at 1 o'clock. <laughs> 12, 12.50, I'm sitting now <laughs> <laughs> watching something. 1 o'clock. You're still sitting still down. sitting. 1.30, I'm on my laptop doing whatever. 2 o'clock, I'm still not doing anything. 3 o'clock, I'm laying down. 3 o'clock. I, okay, let me just go shower. I go shower, come out. Four o'clock. I'm like, wow, I gotta go to the gym. I go make coffee. <laughs> it's 4 p.m. I make coffee. And Grab it, go. and I'm gone. Like, when, when I'm driving there, I'm like, I'm dreading the whole experience. I'm like, I'm not in a good mood. But I go in there, take a shot of that coffee. Oof, I'm gone. So it's like, once I feel that energy, I feel that adrenaline, I feel that caffeine. I'm good, but there are certain days where like you, you don't you don't even know what to do, but you just gotta go. Because you told yourself we we're going to go. That's how you build discipline. That mm-hmm. shit is hard. It's not like, oh, I said I was gonna go, so I go. No, 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 no. Yeah. I look at my shoes, I look at my clothes for like hours. Two, three hours. But I know I have to go. My wife will be like, oh, I thought you said you're going to the gym today. I'm like, God damn it, why'd you have to remind me? <laughs> but, you know, she's like, she just keep pestering me. Are you gonna go to the gym? I'm like, okay. yo. I guess. So, do, do you like think when you have like a good motivator or something that it it keeps you on your toes? Which can all do you think that thing can also let's say helps with your discipline? Like let's say like you said you said you started off with because you were skinny and then you mm-hmm. wanted to build up your chest. And I'm everything. still skinny, by the way, <laughs> but I was really skinny <laughs> to to build up your chest and yeah. everything. So, do you think? Sometimes those can be a very good thing to help build your discipline. Uh, yeah, it is good. That's what got me in the gym in the first mm-hmm. place. Because I didn't. It's not like I was disgusted by what I saw in the gym mm-hmm. in the mirror. No, 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 no. It wasn't that. I've always, see, <laughs> I've always told myself I'm good looking. Oh yeah, yeah. I've always told myself that. But it's just the fact that people will just ask, you ask them, oh, guess your age, and they'll think you're this young. And I'm like, mm-hmm. nah. I got to grow my beard. I just gotta get big just so I could look my age. That was the, that, like that's the only reason. So. I think sometimes a lot of people think 
using external motivators are a wrong thing. Good for them. And then it, there's a balance where, because sometimes when they sell, you are using a sort of external uh, motivations, you kind of begin to seek a lot of external validations too. Like you said, you you had your own insecurities. Mm-hmm. We all have our yeah. own insecurities. Yeah. But I also feel like when you own them, and then you are your own motivator and you validate yourself, it makes it easier. Because like we always, there are a lot of people that go to the gym where they deal with body dysmorphia. Yeah. And then, uh, and then, yo, we will get back to this question. Have you realized that when you go to the gym, you become even more conscious of your body? Yeah, that's yeah. Because you are in there to build your body. <laughs> so it's just like running and somebody saying, don't give up, don't give up, don't give up. You're going to give up. Because that's all you can think about. Mm-hmm. So we're in there focusing on our body, our body, our body. So it's like, you just have to enjoy the process, man. That's why they call it fishing. They don't call it catching. Okay. Just enjoy the process. Go, looking good, it's good. Like it's going to be a perk of you working out. Mm-hmm. But if you're super focused on, oh, I want to look this, no, you're going to get, you're going to end up getting stressed out. Because it, Unless you're gonna go the the n- other route, if you're gonna go the other the route, other route. even you, going the other route, it still requires hard work, mm-hmm. and it's like you're gonna put so much pressure on yourself. It requires a lot of hard work. Mm-hmm. But if you're gonna go the natural route, bruh, yeah, you just gotta enjoy the process. Yeah, for me, per, for me, like one thing that I, I I think I think it's probably one of the reasons why I'm so not into bodybuilding because I know I like attention. Uh, I know what I can do for attention. So if I start focusing on trying to make my body look a certain way, mm-hmm. I think I the probability of me going the other route is very... That's yeah. why I focus more on strength training and trying to get stronger. That's good. Right. Because when I do that, I know that when I'm able to lift heavy, when I'm able to go um, more higher on my weight and then everything, automatically the body will come. Yeah. So I think sometimes... It's good to have that external um, motivation, that source, but you also have to know yourself and know how you can balance it out. Yeah. Because if you don't balance it out, because sometimes like a lot of people can come in with a lot of their own insecurities. Oh, maybe I'm too skinny or I'm too fat or I'm too dead. And then if you don't balance it, that's where it leads into the journey of body dysmorphia, where you are always n- not enough with your body. You won't be enough. And then that's the thing. It's a, it's a going to the gym is like a lifetime subscription. Yeah, that's yeah. how I see it. Yeah, it's a lifetime. It's a lifetime subscription. And I think sometimes too, one of the hardest part, I don't know about you, is let me ask you this question. How was it like? when you started seeing changes in your body how was it like i feel good but the thing is i didn't even know i looked different until i think my wife and i were going somewhere and i had to put on pants and a suit or something so i'm like oh i remember let me go put on my the white shirt i wore Mm -hmm. for our wedding i put a shirt on it's like the sleeve was up to here i'm like what (laughs) i put a pants on and there was a button i'm like and I put a pants and I couldn't even close the button. I'm like, oh, snap. I got bigger. My, like, my thighs wouldn't fit. It was so tight. I'm like, oh. But when I look in the mirror, I still see the same me. That's the thing. Like, Why do I look the same? But it's like, I try. I, I, I put on my old clothes and they don't fit. <laughs> I just had to. I, I still have the suit because, like, it was what it was my wedding suit. Mm-hmm. I don't want to toss it or give it away because it was my wedding suit. Even though it doesn't fit me anymore. But I still have it. So that's. You, because you spend all the t- like you spend time with yourself all the time. All the so time, you're, you're looking at it. yourself in the mirror all the time too, and exactly. then everything. And then that's the thing where sometimes a lot of people don't see it where because because me sometimes you whenever you tell me like yo now your arms look big, I'm like I don't see exactly. anything. Yeah, I don't see anything like no, to me. Won't. I just feel, when I look in the mirror, I still see myself as probably the same person that started working out probably t- around 2018. I still that's the same picture that i still see of yeah. myself yeah, that's true like i tell my wife that too she's like man i look at him she's like uh no you don't you've got him big you've got him big everything is big i'm like okay i still don't see it she's like i'm just tired of telling you this I'm like, okay <laughs> so talking about results though like i know sometimes a lot of people have this idea or this perception that 
within a week or two you're supposed to see results you're supposed to see something on your body huh. and then all that what what is your take on that my take on that my take on that is to enjoy the process because if you're so focused on the results you're just gonna miss it and then it's gonna like you're just gonna what's the right word to use you're just gonna tarnish the entire process you're not gonna enjoy it there's mm-hmm. no fun in the, like there's not gonna be any fun in it for you when i go i'm excited working out have my music on you know mm-hmm. dancing and stuff but it's like if i if i were to be focused on oh the results oh i have to i want to get big quads uh, where is the fun in it? It's not gonna work. I think some people like they come in and they expect quick results. They come in and then I think one thing that if let's say we can get it out there a lot is the the whole gym is not about a results. It's about the journey. Exactly. It's about the journey. If you're able to enjoy the journey, the results itself will just come. And then the result is so funny because like sometimes the results may be coming, but the thing that you wanted today. By next week, like, it's not something that is, you even think about. Cause, like, I remember there were times where, let's say, trying to deadlift two plates. I was like, oh, I want to be able to, because I would see Hakim and the others. At that time, they would be deadlifting three plates, four plates. And I'm like, dude, I'm even struggling to lift two plates. And then getting there, I was like, I need to be able to lift two plates, be able to lift two plates. But once I got there... <laughs> You just go that. It's like, eh. but now when I look back, it's more fun. The journey exactly. getting that's there. The, that's, the, that's the beautiful part of it. It's just the fun. The journey getting there, the person that you became exactly. to get there. Yeah. That journey, that's because like, part. if I was so focused on the two plates, that, yeah, now you can lift two plates. Now, but what? two plates, so? Now you get two plates, now they are then lifting five plates. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> Let's see, let's see how so you catch like up to them. So it's like an endless till of just, you just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And then sometimes you can be a lot. So how do you see, I know there is, competi- there is, what do you, I, I'm trying to find the right way. There is, is it clean competition? Uh, competition? So they have a positive competition where sometimes, you know, because sometimes you can go to the gym and maybe you have someone that you look up to where maybe they lift five plates and then they do that. Competitions are good mm-hmm. in a healthy way. Mm-hmm. It can be good. How do you balance it out? Because sometimes if you don't take care, you can do ego lifting yeah. and you can go hurt yourself. That's true. Like, how do you balance where? Because we are guys mm-hmm. and our ego can step in where sometimes, like, what? Well, I remember the day that <clears throat> you lifted four plates and I did a video. I knew I could lift four plates. But I've never actually tried lifting four plates. Exactly. And then when you did that, I was like, what? You can do it. <laughs> I think I can do this shit. You see? So you just got to try it. Yeah. But when you're working with people, like how working out with people, how do you find that balance? Where they, even though they can be competition, they can, you make it more healthy. They can be that healthy competition. So one thing I'd say is, just like you got to accept the fact that we're all different. Mm-hmm. We are not going to have the same strength. We don't eat the same. We don't put the same things in our body. Mm-hmm. Our body composition is different. It's not the same. Mm-hmm. So you have to accept that fact. But also you got to push yourself. So I remember when I started working out, I think every time I go to the gym with you, we start with, uh, we were doing squats. We start with just the bar and we go to 10, we go to 25 and then 45, right? That's how, that's what we're doing. So one time I just decided, I'm like, ah, no, I'm just going to go straight with the go bar after uh, just warm up with the bar. Once I'm done with the bar, fuck, I'm skipping 10 pounds. I'm skipping 25, going straight to 45, one one plate. (laughs) I did it. That's crazy. And that became my new normal. Mm Do you understand? So you just got to find ways to push yourself in a healthy way. I'm not in a competition with you. I'm mm-hmm. in a competition with me. Exactly. So it's good. Oh, that's my homeboy. He's strong. He's getting strong. Good stuff. I see you well, bench pressing two plates and I'm not going to try it. <laughs> no. I'm going to push myself. I'm like, oh, I could, be- I could bench a plate and 25. Let me see if I could bench a plate and 35. That's how I'm not going to see you benching 225 or 245. And I'm like, oh, he's doing it. I'm going to do it. That's how you end up tearing stuff and getting yourself injured. So you just got to know yourself mm-hmm. and do not compare yourself to people. 
Like, oh, what he's doing is great, but I'm also going to go at my own pace. So you, just, you always got to go to your mind and see like how it's like it's just it's all about you mm -hmm. don't compare yourself to people and how and how you work because the way i work is oh, okay i did this i i deadlifted um or yeah deadlifted two plates let's see if i could do 225 oh no let's see if i can do um two plates and a 2.5 pound mm -hmm. i don't care what people think about me mm -hmm. i'm just here challenging myself if i can do it oh let's push let's push Keep moving the goalpost. Keep moving it. Mm -hmm. That's that's what it is. I don't care what you're doing. See you later. Wouldn't want to be you. Mm -hmm. I'm on like I'm on my own journey. Exactly. This is my lane. I'm not jumping. No, I can't. I, I think I some, can't keep up with you. Sometimes like we don't see it, and I think also maybe social media um kind of makes it more very like in a broad spectrum way because we see other people because sometimes like you can see people the same age the same weight maybe mm -hmm. they are probably squatting five plates and stuff and then once you consume a lot of that if you don't take care you may start to feel like maybe you are not enough or you may start to feel like ah like and the, and the, that's the thing with social media social media is like a double-edged sword way it's, like, it's very good but if you don't also don't take care, the, the the more you are consuming certain stuff, you can be a lot for yeah. the brains. That's why you gotta know yourself. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Because like you, could, there's people the same age as you, mm -hmm. same body weight. Oh, like what? I think three weeks ago I went to the gym and I saw this guy. I'm 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 bigger. I'm taller than this guy. I was deadlifting. Was it four fifteen? I think I did that for two reps. Homeboy, he's short. I'm bigger than he is. He was deadlifting, what? F 425 for reps. <laughs> and I'm like, you can't compare. Exactly. And there's a guy who was big. That's same thing. There's this guy who's bigger than I am. And homeboy was struggling with three plates. Mm -hmm. like, uh, so it's like, you just can't compare yourself to people. Mm -hmm. So you could see somebody, oh, he's the same weight as me. I saw him squat five plates. Wow, that's impressive. Where am I at now? Two plates. Okay, let me see if I can push myself. Not go add three more plates. No. Two plates. Five. Mm -hmm. Ten. Gradual process. Exactly. Don't, don't just jump into it. Mm -hmm. That's good. You jump into it, it's going to be the end of you. That's it. Okay. Yeah. That, that, that's So before we end this, um, what is one message that you have for people that want to start working out? That want to start going into this whole fitness journey. What is one message that you have for them? One message I have for them. Huh. One message. It's just to go. Just go. And one thing, one well, one thing that helped me is I like to look good. I like to dress well. Mm -hmm. And it's like dressing well also, like it enhances your confidence for mm -hmm. some reason. Bruh, just go. Show up in your best fit. Mm -hmm. Like and once you step in there, even the way you dress, there's also an evolution. It's not going to be the same. You That's understand? also true. You just put on whatever you have, whatever that makes you feel good, whatever makes you feel your best, mm -hmm. and just go. So just go. Just go. Have, you know, just go. If you're going to show up smiling, you know, you're going to show up frowning. It's all you. The fact that you are there, it's all that matters. Mm -hmm. It could be a gradual process. Pull up, go, walk in there, go ask, oh, how much is the subscription? How much do I pay? Walk out. The next day, pull up to the parking lot. Just sit in the parking lot and just watch people go in and out. It's like those basic, simple steps. Fuck that. That is like you've been complicating it. Just go. It's just go. There's nothing else. Yeah, I mean, Walk it's, in it's, there. it's always the first, first step. step. Exactly. Just Getting there, like being able to get your ass up. To go. Be like, okay, I'm gonna go to the gym to get a a gym membership. Just go. And then sometimes you can even get a gym membership, but you're actually not going and you're just paying the money. Good for you. And I'm here doing the Lord's work. So philanthropy. That, like we said, there is nothing wrong with using other things as a motivator to get yourself to the gym. Right? You, like you said, you said you wanted to get your chest bigger. You wanted to look bigger. You didn't like the idea that people were still seeing you as like a 15-year-old boy. When you were not a 15-year-old boy. So you wanted to look your age, which is very good. And then there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Oh, I don't even care if people think there's yeah. wrong with it. So you just need to find that motivation, that why. And you're there. That why. 
that way and then sometimes to a lot of and then that goes to the people that you know just likes to maybe complain about stuff is sometimes too we have our why but the taking the action is the problem oh, yeah. but we just want to sit down and then talk about how maybe we don't look good or how we don't like the way our stomach is big and we know what we have to do but we also don't want to do, do it we just want to sit down and see it's hard it's hard it's like knowing knowing something and actually doing it they are like poles apart very different things you understand it's hard but like I said you just gotta go you just gotta show up bro all That's right it. Man. so i just thank you very much Anytime. for coming and hopefully we will see you yeah. in another video yeah all right yeah. so um guys before we go i just want to say this is the first episode of the podcast and then I want you to tune in and then there's going to be more videos coming in. So we'll see you guys in the next video. All right. Thanks.